Indonesia. Seemingly a tropical island paradise. Rich waters support an abundance of life. While pristine forests are packed with a diverse mix of residents. Majestic and dramatic landscapes. This is a nation born from fire. With more active volcanoes than anywhere else in the world. It's one of the most geologically volatile countries on Earth. But for the island's inhabitants, these volcanic forces don't just threaten life, they actually enrich it. The Indonesian archipelago, a chain of 17,000 islands, lying at the heart of the volcanic ring of fire. Almost all of the world's earthquakes and three quarters of its active volcanoes occur within this geographical horseshoe. The most famous being the Krakatoa eruption in 1883. After lying dormant for nearly 200 years, this small volcanic island dramatically burst into life, decimating everything in its path. Ash and rock was ejected over 30 kilometers into the air, with an explosion recorded as the loudest sound on Earth. But Indonesia's geological story today is still a violent one. With four tectonic plates continually shifting below the ocean floor, the results are explosive. Over 130 active volcanoes dominate all but one of Indonesia's major islands. They pose a serious threat to its inhabitants. At first sight, the land appears hostile and desolate. Yet somehow, life doesn't just survive here. It thrives. Indonesia has more types of mammals than any other country housing close to 700 different species. 10% of all known plant species. And 17% of the entire world's bird species. What is it about this volcano nation that allows such a vast number of creatures to flourish? The island of Java lies at the center of Indonesia's chain. It's home to a third of the country's active volcanoes. The most well-known is this inhospitable scene. The Tenga Caldera. An immense crater measuring over 16 kilometers wide, was formed almost a million years ago. This vast desert 
is not sand, but ash and cinder. Today it has four active volcanoes at its core. Mount Bromo belches out rock and toxic gases on a daily basis. Plants are smothered so regularly, barely anything can survive. Yet across Indonesia, landscapes like these are common. And these apparent graveyards are actually an appealing nursery site for one resident. The Megapode is infamous for its lack of parenting skills. This bird prefers to let nature incubate her eggs. A close relative of the grouse and pheasant, megapodes range across Australia and Asia, choosing warm sandy beaches or decomposing forest mounds as nests. But this particular species in Indonesia has selected an actual furnace. And what better place than an active volcano to provide free underfloor heating? The name Megapode translates as big foot. And with these tools, they're perfectly equipped for digging more than half a meter into the ground. For one female, however, excavating her own hole is far too much effort, especially when there are plenty of other birds already at it. Instead, she has mastered the art of theft. She silently stalks her victim. Choosing her moment carefully, she inches ever closer. And then, after just a brief scuffle, she claims her prize. She lays a single egg and then piles the warm volcanic ash back on top. This chick won't hatch for three months. Feeding on the oversized yolk, it will grow and mature from the safety of its incubator and will only emerge once fully feathered and strong enough to fly. A perfect escape tactic for starting life alone in the extremes. Away from the intense heat and destruction of the active volcanoes lies an inviting paradise. The continual eruption of new land from under the waves has created a huge number of volcanic islands. And this is one of the secrets of Indonesia's success. Some of the more remote provide isolated pockets of sanctuary. Endless kilometers of pristine beaches draw in one of the furthest traveling migrants in the ocean. It's as night falls that these wanderers arrive. Guided by her homing instinct, this female leatherback turtle has traveled for thousands of kilometers to come and lay her eggs on the same beach where she herself was born. She's not alone. In high season, this shoreline will receive hundreds of mothers in a night. Living up to 45 years, Leatherbacks grow into the world's largest sea turtle, reaching two meters in length and weighing in at 900 kilos. Using her massive flippers, she excavates a deep nest. A single swipe can displace more than a bucket full of sand. Over the course of the night, she lays around a hundred eggs 
in this warm volcanic sun. Once she's done, she fills the nest back in. And heads back out to sea. This female won't return to see her young. But she's chosen an isolated beach to give them the best start in life. But for some island creatures, turtle eggs are a delicacy. The endless and rich waters surrounding Indonesia's vast volcanic islands play host to a unique mix of creatures. Its coral reefs are among the most diverse in the world and support an array of marine animals. This aquatic monster is evidently at home under the waves. But today, this amphibious water monitor is in pursuit of a land-based snack. And once on land, the beast transforms. Suddenly his heavy muscular legs are his aid. long, sharp claws are his weapons. Receiving directional signals from a snake-like forked tongue, he picks up on a scent. There are rich pickings on the beach today. This prehistoric predator could easily outrun his prey. But on this occasion, he might not need to. He locks onto his target. Luckily for him, a hurried leatherback turtle mother did not cover her tracks well enough. A clue lies in the sand and guides him to a nest full of eggs. With their mother now far out at sea, there's no one to protect them. These are a rich source of protein, and there are plenty here for him to enjoy. For the leatherback, this was one of nature's tough lessons. Even the most isolated of beaches can be the feeding ground of fierce predators. As a stark contrast to this tropical paradise lies the large, rugged island of Sumatra. It's the furthest west of Indonesia's island chain and is one of the wildest. 
away from the lush green forests. Scenes like this are common. After four decades of lying dormant, Mount Cinnabon is now in an active state. Hundreds of steam vents litter the landscape, providing clues to the torment below the surface. Deafening to the ear, these vents expel toxic sulfurous gases at superheated temperatures. As it mixes with air and cools, the sulfur solidifies and dyes the rock. It's hard to imagine how anything could live here. Yet, just meters away, lie the richest of forests. Thanks to the fertile soils that come directly from the mouth of the volcano, this land is the perfect breeding ground for life. Indonesia is home to more types of primates than anywhere else in the world with more than 10 species in Sumatra alone. Among this huge family are the langurs, or leaf monkeys. Translated from Hindi, their name is long tail, and they definitely live up to it. But perhaps the most distinctive looking are the Thomas leaf monkeys, native to northern Sumatra. A typical family, like this one, is made up of one male and up to six females with their young. Despite their name, these monkeys don't just eat leaves. Fruit, seeds and insects make up at least half of their diet. And rubber trees like these provide giant seeds packed with tasty nutrients. But the trees can be quite far apart. So the best way to move around is to jump. With long tails, slender limbs, and a relatively lightweight body. Adult Thomas leaf monkeys are built to jump with ease. But for the youngsters in the group, practice will eventually make perfect. This youngster is now three months old and is brave enough to venture further into the canopy on his own. But he needs to keep his wits about him. Down on the forest floor, a hunter is on the prowl. The reticulated python is the world's longest snake. This female normally hunts at night, but her camouflage allows her to go unnoticed in daylight. Silently scouring for a meal. She's capable of consuming a large deer in one mouthful. 
However, a young monkey, busy figuring out his way in the treetops, is a meal hard to pass up. Equally at home in the trees as she is on the ground, the python snakes her way up. Luckily, one of the older females has sharp eyes. She sounds the alarm, and the troop put their leaping skills into action. The baby is safe. This time. Indonesia's volcanoes may have given the forest a good basis on which to grow. But there's another key ingredient to life. Water. Indonesia lies within the monsoon region and experiences annual flooding. The result is the dense and nutrient-rich forests. But it's up to its residents to sustain it. Dispersal of seeds is key to the growth of new trees. From a distance, these trees appear to be covered in dark leaves. But the noisy chatter gives up their disguise. This bustling camp is one of Indonesia's biggest colonies of fruit bats. Also known as flying foxes, they're the largest of all bats, weighing in at just over a kilo. They have a wingspan of almost two meters, equal to the average human's height. Unlike most bats, they don't use reflective sound to get around, but instead rely on their large eyes. As they roost out in the open, seeing in the dark is a redundant skill. For the majority of these nocturnal feeders, daylight is their time to rest. But it's not always a peaceful roost. Short bursts of sleep are punctuated with jostles over territory. Essential grooming and wing maintenance. This display isn't merely a stretch. It's a way of cooling down. Their dark color absorbs heat quickly. And with outside temperatures regularly passing 30 degrees Celsius, overheating is a concern. Their wings are filled with blood vessels. Flapping them disperses huge amounts of heat. The delicate membrane connects their four highly extended fingers. Just a short thumb is left free. With a hook-shaped claw, it serves as an ideal climbing device. Although they spend most of their time hanging upside down, certain jobs are best done the right way up.
black guano is one of nature's best fertilizers. High in phosphorus and nitrogen, it's this injection of nourishment that is one of the secrets of the forest's success. But these bats aren't just spreading nutrients. Having spent the night feeding on fruit, they disperse seeds that have passed through their gut intact. For as long as these bats continue to reproduce, the forest will thrive. For the first few weeks of this baby's life, it stays clung to its mother's belly while its wings begin to strengthen. In three months, it'll be able to fly solo. As dusk falls, activity in the camp increases. And hunger drives the bats to take to the skies. Once demonized in ghost stories, the misunderstood bat plays a vital role in sustaining one of the richest rainforests on the planet. Borneo is the giant of Indonesia, covering an area of almost 750,000 square kilometers. It's the third largest island in the world and the only major island in Indonesia with no active volcanoes. As the sun rises, the forest's residents begin to stir. All but one legendary giant, the sun bear. Christened by Indonesian folklore for the golden orb markings on their chests, They're renowned for their climbing abilities. This female has spent the night sleeping high up in this tree. It's a long way down. But with large claws wrapped around the trunk and hairless soles to maximize her grip, she makes it look easy. Now she's made it down from her perch, she spends most of her waking day scouring the forest floor in search of food. Feasting on over a hundred different species of insects. In the damp of the jungle, the fallen tree soon begins to decay. It's then host to a variety of bugs. With her powerful claws and the strongest canine teeth in the bear family, she breaks open the bounty and devours the termites inside. Her healthy appetite inadvertently protects the forest. By feasting on termites, she keeps their population in check, which in turn aids the trees. All this climbing, log breaking and feasting is tiring work. So for now, another nap is called for. Dense forest is punctuated by hot springs across the volcano nation. 
But none come more enchanting than Tingi Raja, back on the island of Sumatra. Superheated water bubbles up from deep fissures in the earth. Here at the surface, it's still at boiling point. As it cools on contact with the air, dissolved minerals are then deposited, creating this huge dome. The extreme temperatures and toxic sulfurous gases are enough to keep most animals away. But specialist microbes have somehow adapted to live here and give the pool its distinct coloration. Just a few meters away, another aspect of this formation resembles a landscape garden. Chalky deposits have formed these snow-like terraces, perfectly carved into the slope. On closer inspection, tiny solidified droplets lend a clue as to the formation of this unique structure. Perhaps the most bizarre feature is that these terraces can move. As the underground source of water often changes location, the surface flow takes a different course, depositing minerals in new areas. Last year, these trees stood in the forest. Now, they stand scorched in water. Across Indonesia, distinctive geological features formed by volcanic activity have pushed species to evolve very specific adaptations. The Siamang is the largest of the gibbon family. Its cousins in Borneo are well known for their loud voices and their aerial acrobatics. But the Sumatran Siamang has taken things even further. This large throat pouch serves as a resonating chamber, sending their calls far into the forest. But that's not all that makes this couple unique. Their home isn't the expected dense forest that they can swing through the trees in. They reside in the sparse vegetation on a sheer rock face. These huge granite cliffs have pushed up with the movement of the Earth's crust, creating a hidden valley, the Harau Canyon. Lined with endless waterfalls, plummeting over 300 meters. Life here is contained vast. Rich volcanic soil combined with this regular hydrating has produced a highly fertile valley floor. It's no wonder the human population have exploited this too. Rice is the staple diet throughout Indonesia and this is the perfect place for endless paddy fields.
Perhaps it's the human presence and change of land use that has forced the Siamangs in this part of Sumatra to trade trees for rocks. The result? They've perfected the skill of climbing. It's vital they remain sure-footed. It's a long way down. In other parts of the forest, granite cliffs give way to enormous limestone caves, carved out by the Earth's water. This visual void is another habitat that puts huge demands on its residents. Cave swiftlets are one of the only birds known to echolocate. Just as bats do, they send out a series of clicks which bounce off surrounding objects and let the birds navigate safely. The reason for this unique skill is their choice of nest site. Unlike other birds, they don't collect nest material, but use their own bodily fluids. Clinging to tiny high-rise ledges, they lay long lines of their own saliva. With its unique blend of proteins, it's perfect for sticking to cave walls as it dries almost instantly on contact with air. A nest like this can take over a month to construct. For everyone, in this volcano nation, adaptation is the key to survival. There's one prehistoric herbivore that's barely clinging to existence. The closest living relative of the woolly mammoth. This is the Sumatran rhino. Hidden away in the dense forests, they're a rare sight in the wild. Less than a hundred still remain. As their appearance suggests, they've roamed these lands for centuries. They may be the smallest of all the species of rhino. Yet this female is still capable of covering 15 kilometers in a night seeking out prime plants to feed on. She disappears back into the magical forest. Even though there are no active volcanoes on the island of Borneo, there is another force engulfing the forest. A silent killer. This is one of the biggest destructive forces, a mud volcano. One of only a thousand on the planet. This is one of the largest, over 120 meters wide at its mouth and spreading. Ancient rainwater gets forcefully pushed up from deep within the earth, mixing with rock and clay. The pressure causes a muddy sludge to erupt through cracks in the surface. Each day, fresh mud is spewed out of its core, slowly wiping out vast areas of pristine jungle. The water is so salty, no plants can grow here. And as if that wasn't enough mud, Borneo's skies do 
do what they do best. Some parts of the island receive up to four meters in a year. The additional water causes the mud flow to increase, eating further and further into the forest. As is common in this volcano nation, things aren't always what they seem. For some, this eruption of mud is a thing to be celebrated. Where there is mud, there are sure to be pigs. The rich forest provides these bearded pigs with a varied diet of plants, insects and fungi. Yet they still need to top up with a salty supplement. This mud-soaked water is packed with minerals. It's now the rainy season, a time when forest food is abundant. And as these pigs time their breeding with times of plenty, piglets are everywhere. With up to six per adult female, these single mothers have their work cut out. While the males just look on from the sidelines. Bearded pigs have extremely long, slim legs. And they're definitely useful here. While these light-footed piglets find it quite easy to navigate the mud, there is a definite downside to having a bigger belly. For the rest of the family, it's now back to the forest to forage. Indonesia is a place of extremes. Barren, scorched landscapes lie next to rich and diverse forests. Through their ability to adapt, the animals that live here have found new ways to thrive. Cashing in on the heat, the rich minerals and the unique diversity of landscapes that this volcano nation provides.